Américain. Tonai Zabokash se présente Miss Penny, Félix et Friends. Hello. I would like to welcome our new guest um, from Malakia Ministries. His name is Kazakia Yoresh Ben Yisrael. And today we're going to discuss about the Sabbath and uh, the names of Yahweh and Yahshua, how they came about, and the controversy about Sabbath, Saturday or Sunday. Um, Brother Kazakia, I would like to know what exactly is the Sabbath? Well, of course, we all are familiar with the Sabbath. Uh, basically, it is a, the day of rest. According to the uh, Strong's numbers, 76, 76, it comes from the word Shabbat which means a intermission or a day of rest. And uh, it's also, if you look at the uh, Strong's numbers from the exhaustive concordance of the Hebrew and Greek lexicon, you will find that it's also from the Greek word sabbaton, which means the day of weekly repose to rest from weekly or secular avocations. I want to point out that we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that a biblical day consists of a scriptural time from sunset to sunset. Now, the Creator gave us a record as far as to when and how the day is designed or to be established. If we look at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 16, it tells us that Elohim made two great lights, and the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser night to rule the night. He made the stars also. Verse 17, and Elohim set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So a Sabbath starts, brothers and sisters. We have to get a clear understanding that the Sabbath begins at the set. When the sun sets on Friday, which is the sixth day, Yom Shishi, then we begin the Sabbath at the set of that Friday. And the Sabbath goes from the set of that Friday to the set of that Sunday, uh, the set of that Saturday. So we go from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, and that is the full, complete cycle of the weekly Sabbath. Okay. Um, I read about the Sabbath. I've been practicing the Sabbath for, uh, I say, about four years. And I read it in Exodus, in the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verses one through se uh, 21 through 17. And part of that was saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But when I ask, tell people about Sabbath, they tend to think that it's Sunday. And sometimes I get an argument, sometimes I don't. But a lot of people believe that the Sabbath is really Sunday and that it was changed. And, but when I ask them who changed it, they really say, some people say the church. Um, but I ask more questions, but they really can't give me an answer to that. It's usually tradition. It's rooted down in tradition. Uh, my mom wrestled, wrestled with it for about 20 years before she made a decision to observe Sabbath. I read the book called National Sunday Law, mm -hmm. and in one, about two days, I was convinced that the Sabbath is real, plus it's part of the Ten Commandments. So I don't understand, you know, I, I just, that's one of the reasons why I brought you to the show, because there's so much controversy seemed like about the sun, Saturday, Sunday uh, worship, but then they turn around and say, well, you know, I worship him every day of the week, but he specifically said Sabbath. When you read, I read about the creation, day one through day seven. Day seven, he rested, and he hollowed the Sabbath. Hmm. So I, I'm glad I brought you on so you can kind of put some clarity out there that the Sabbath is his command. It's not something we pick. It's something that we have to, we have to do because he commands us to do it. So um, could you let me know where it's introduced in the Bible? I, I know about Exodus 20, 1 through 17 as part of the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. but is it anywhere else in the Bible? Absolutely. And one thing I like before I want to expound on that is that we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that this is a thing of obedience. The Father doesn't care about your religion. He mm -hmm. is concerned about us as his creation obeying him and the problem with most of us in our religious aspect is that we want to give the most high what we want to give him we don't want to obey the most high and do what he says do 
We want to have a Burger King salvation, a Burger King religion, that we can do what we want to do and not obey the, the law, statutes, and commands of the Most High. So now I want to look at uh, Genesis, Battersea, Genesis chapter 2, where it's very clear where the Most High lays the law down prior to the prophet Moshe, who you call Moses, having the scripture given to him by the Most High, spoon-fed to him. But before Moses got the Most High gave the mandate to all of creation in Genesis chapter 2. Here's what it says, Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 through 3. It says, on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work and he had, that he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. Now, I would advise you, brothers and sisters that are watching on TV, to get a calendar. Look at your calendar and see what does it say on the calendar the seventh day is. Is it the first day or is it the seventh day? Let's look back at the scripture. He says here, he rested on the seventh day. Your week starts, brothers and sisters, on the first day of the week. Sunday by name, okay? Sunday, day one. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's seven days, brothers and sisters. So the Most High is clear in his word. He says, on the seventh day. Now watch what he says here. He says, on Yom Shebi, that's seven in Hebrew, from all his work which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day. He didn't bless the first day. He blessed the seventh day. Watch what it says here now. He blessed the seventh day and sanctified it or set it apart. He set this day apart from all the other days of the week. This was a day that he designed, that he ordained according to his law, according to his precepts, according to his standard. Not according to our religious philosophy, but according to his standard. He says that he set apart the seventh day. Now watch what he says here. And it says that, and Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart because that in it he had rested from all his work which Elohim created and made. Okay. Um, why do most believers say that we don't have to keep the Sabbath, though? I mean, even though they worship on Sunday, they just disregard that word. They just say, I worship on Sunday. They don't even use the word Sabbath. Hmm. You know, they used to just say, I, I, I go to church on Sundays. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> it goes back to, you know, what we said uh, just prior to you asking the question mm -hmm. is that people, brothers and sisters, want to have their own religion and they want to make it convenient for them. They want to do what they feel that they should do and not what the Most High has ordained. Okay? So, but there's two things I want to deal with with answering that question. And uh, that is, is that number one, some people don't keep the Shabbat, because that's the Hebrew Shabbat, Sabbath Shabbat because they don't understand. There's a lack of understanding or ignorance to, to what, how to keep the Shabbat. We're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And what a Shabbat is, because they've been mistaught. They've been incorrectly taught by the pastor who has a, a DD degree or a PhD degree, mm -hmm. who went to theological cemetery and who knows all of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And they're telling them that the Sabbath is Sunday, which is clear in the scripture we just read, where the Most High detailed that the first day of the week is not the Sabbath. It is the seventh day of the week. So some people, brothers and sisters, don't read their Bible. The problem is that if you don't read your Bible, then how can you challenge what the teacher is teaching you from the pulpit? Whatever they pull to you from the pulpit, you accept because that teacher is teaching you. You're not taking upon your own self a responsibility to get into the word of the most high to find out what is it that he requires from you. That is so and that's funny. key point. So that's the first point I want to make. The second point is that these so-called teachers, doctors, and scholars, and so forth that have PhD degrees and doctor's degrees that have gone to school of theology or cemetery school, <laughs> they know what the word says. But for their own purpose and reason, for whatever it might be, they refuse to teach it. So they go into total rebellion and disobedience and continue to teach and feed people what the people want to hear and not what thus saith the Most High. And plus people are, they lack reading. They don't read the Bible. 
uh, for my deeper study, that's how I found out about Sabbath. Once my mother gave me the book, she knows I'm a researcher by nature. She just knew to give me the book and she walked. So mm -hmm. she planted the seed, but we know that Yah gives the increase. Mm -hmm. So I did more research on the Sabbath and found out, you know, it's part of the Ten Commandments. It's something we ought to do. It's, uh, Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. There's a lot of uh, advantages of observing Sabbath that people really don't understand because Saturday is a day of a whole lot of things happen on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I got more trouble <laughs> on Sabbath than I did any day of the week. But then when I start observing Sabbath and appreciating this value and how important it is to, to me, uh, I, I, I got out of a lot of trouble because the Sabbath was made for rest. People work seven days a week. They work 12 hours a day. They don't even have time to read, let alone take care of their business at home. So a lot of people just, I don't know, they, they program to do certain things on the Sabbath that they normally do. They get their hair done, they go pay bills, sure. they go pick up, take the kids to piano <laughs> lessons, and you know, all that. So a lot of people are just really busy today, and they don't even acknowledge. It's almost like they don't even acknowledge the day at all. So and I, I wish that uh, people would do it and read their Bibles more, because that is so important, to, to read your Bibles for yourself. Do not depend on the pastor or the minister to feed you, spoon feed you everything. Mm -hmm. We do have a, um, a responsibility to read our Bibles at home, make time, put the kids to bed, try to find some sort of way for people to read about the Sabbath. Just don't argue. Because right. I got more <laughs> arguments, but then when I tell them to read it, I say read Exodus. That's my that's my my hammer. I use Exodus, uh, one through tw uh, chapter twenty one through seventeen, mm -hmm. and I said remember the Sabbath. That's Why right. would he put remember in there? Because he right. knew we we will forget. We will forget about it, especially if we're working, making money all the time, mm -hmm. which is what society is about. So. I'm, I'm really grateful that you, you explained it in detail how important it is because I rested. I, I really appreciate Sabbath. It has changed my life. It keeps me out of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole lot of damage is done. And yeah. so I'm, I'm grateful that my, you know, Yahweh used my mom to yes. plant the seed. Yeah. And I just grew from there. But it is important. But yeah. something you said which was key is that we need that refresher time. Mm -hmm. That day of rest is not only a physical day, brothers and sisters, that we rest physically, mm -hmm. but it's a time of refilling. You know, it, when you give the Most High a full day, I mean, we, we, we go to our place of employment, we work mm -hmm. uh, set, uh, five days, six days, some people work seven, seven days a week, days, yes. ten hours a day. Mm -hmm. But when we give the Most High that day to allow Him to refresh us, you live longer because why you allow yourself time to, to sit back and to, to recuperate from that hectic week that you had. And not only that, because the other part, the spiritual part, because we got to understand we are spiritual beings as well as natural beings. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't fill ourselves up spiritually, and it's sad to say that uh, most of the time we go to church on Sunday, we don't get no feeling because we get one or two or three scriptures. But the Most High wants us to spend that quality time with Him where He can feed us. Because sometimes you might go to church or wherever you go to mosque or temple, wherever mm -hmm. you go, mm -hmm. and not get fed by that teacher, preacher, or whoever. But the Most High will pull you to the side and begin to deal with you and begin to heal your eternal being so that you could be refreshed and revived. And not only that, but you can mm -hmm. hear clearly because He may be wanting to use you to reach out to a loved one in various circumstances and situations. But if you don't sit still long enough to allow yes. the spirit to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to rejuvenate your person, my goodness, you won't be no good to yourself or nobody else. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to kind of add something, too, as, as we were prepared for this uh, uh, session. The Most High gave me some things to share. And the other thing I wanted to share is that a lot of people, they, the question is, why do most believers say they don't have to keep the Shabbat? Because one of the things, brothers and sisters, people say is that the law is done. We don't have to keep the law. Mm -hmm. Jesus fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law. Okay. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, unless you understand or know the law, mm -hmm. how can you say the law is fulfilled or done? What law are you talking about is fulfilled or done? You have no clue because you won't read the Old Testament. <laughs> so I want to just kind of share something here is that it's very clear that uh, Kepha, who you call Peter, mm -hmm. 
he made a point that people would take the teachings of Shaul, not only Shaul only, but other teachings of the scripture, and twist those scriptures to gratify themselves, to satisfy their own purpose, to create their own religious system. And watch what he says here. Second Peter, if you could turn it at, at home, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 16 says, he says, an account that the long-suffering of our master is salvation, even as our beloved brother Shaul, who you call Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, verse 16. Watch this now, watch this. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things which in which are some things hard to understand, and which they that are unlearned and unstable twist as they do other scriptures unto their own destruction. Mm. So people will take the scripture to say, oh, I don't have to keep the seventh day Sabbath because we got a new Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So they say the law is done and fulfilled. Now, let me just kind of share this here. Understand, I'm not going to read the whole thing because we're dealing with time. In Matthew chapter 5, the Messiah made it clear that he said that he did not come to destroy the law and the commandments, yeah. but he came to fulfill. Now, watch this now. We've got to understand what is it that he came to fulfill. Did he come to fulfill the moral law, or did he come to fulfill the law as pertaining to him in the prophets? Okay? That's a good question. Now, he also declared that in verse 19 of the fifth chapter of, of Matith Yahu, or you call it Matthew, mm -hmm. whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So the Most High commands us to teach the commandments. They're not done away. Now watch this now, because I, I made a point I want to I make here. So he said here that, so the question is, what law did the Messiah come to fulfill? The moral law, or did he come to fulfill another law, which would be the law of sacrifices? Okay. That's a good question, right? Yes, it is. Now, so if we look at Luke 24, Luke 24, verse 44 through 45 says, And he said unto them, now he was talking to the disciples, the 12 disciples he had, mm -hmm. and he said to them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. Okay, now this was after he had resurrected from the dead. He said, All things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses mm -hmm. and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me, all right? When he spoke that to them, they understood that he was not talking about the moral law is done away with, but all the prophets that spoke concerning him, concerning his mission and his purpose. Now, another way to understand that is if we look at Isaiah, Yeshua, Isaiah chapter 53, 5 says, he makes it clear. He says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, mm -hmm and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with the stripes we are healed. Now, John, Yachanan, came, who was the precursor, or the, pre uh, the, the predecessor, I should say, before Yeshua came on the scene in the flesh, because he always was there in the Old Testament. That's a whole other lesson. Yeah. <laughs> but he said, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim that take away the sin of the world. So he knew the purpose of the Messiah was not to do away with the law because where there is no law, there is no order. But his purpose was to do away with the sacrifice for sins. So it's a difference between the sacrificial law and the moral law. Yes. And most people say, well, that was nailed to the cross or nailed to the stake, as mm -hmm. I read. It wasn't a cross. <laughs> it was a stake. Um, they insist on that. They, I guess that's their way of excusing the Ten Commandments. Because mm -hmm. really, if you break one, most people are breaking, what's that, the Fourth Commandment? Is mm -hmm. that the, uh, remember the Sabbath day? Mm -hmm. And I know the first four commandments based on how to worship Him and how to love Him. And the last six are based on how you treat yourself and your neighbor. Mm -hmm. So if they break in one of them, which is the Sabbath, you break one, you break all. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make that clear. <laughs> exactly. Now, what you just quoted, I have in my notes here, is one of the key scriptures, scriptures brothers and sisters, that people use to say we don't have to keep the law. Mm -hmm. Not understanding what law we're talking about, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what my sister just quoted, Sister Penny just quoted, is that he says that blotting out handwriting ordinances mm -hmm. that was against us. 
which was contrary to us that took us out the way, nailing it to the tree, or to the styros, to the, uh, King James says cross, we understand, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he have showed them openly triumphing over them in it. Now, what hand, that's the question that you need to ask. What hand writing ordinance, brothers and sisters, did he nail to the tree? What handwriting? You have to understand the law to understand that it was an order or an ordinance for the sons of Levi, the priests, to offer sacrifices continuously. That's a whole other lesson. But you got to understand that the Levites, their responsibility was to offer uh, goats and bulls and meat offerings and drink offerings and so forth and so on. Now, another place that they use to say that the law is fulfilled is found in Colossians 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And that says, let no man therefore judge you in meat and drink or respect of a holy day of the new moon of the Sabbath day. Okay, now, key point I want to make in that verse is that you got to underline meat or drink. Because if you don't understand the law, then you don't understand that the sacrifices were of meat, were of drink, and were of burnt offerings. Okay, so when he said that, because the Israelites, after the Messiah had died for the sins where the, where the veil was ripped in half, they were still offering sacrifices and keeping the feast days. All right? So now, uh, the, Shaul was trying to communicate to them that you don't need a bull, go to lamb, or drink offering, or meat offering. All you have to do is come and offer to the Most High, the fruit of your lips and the sacrifice of praise continually and a life that is pleasing, morally pleasing to the Most High. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Wow. Because, I, I mean, I, I've had um, a lot of people use those two scriptures. That's what they use to come at me about, you know, the Sabbath and, and the laws. And I read it in Leviticus, how, they, uh, how the priests would go in, how they did the Day of Atonement, and how they used to sacrifice. But once Yahshua came, he was the sacrifice yes. once and for all. <laughs> so we don't have to keep doing that over and over again. But yet people still, they use those two scriptures to come at you saying, um, you know. Yeah. But I understand uh, from my reading that he was the only one that was accepted from Yahweh to be the perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah. And, um, well, there's, there's, there's a few other scriptures mm -hmm. that I had that I want to share. I'm glad because we're, we're, we're flowing in the spirit right now. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7 through 8 says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump. So if you don't understand the law, you don't understand why we keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unleavened Bread was a type of sin. Mm -hmm. Now watch what he says. This is what Shaul says. He says, Purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For even the Messiah, our Passover, mm. is sacrificed for us. You see that? And watch what he says here, verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not do away with the feast. That includes the weekly Sabbath, but he said, therefore, let us keep the feast. See that? And not with old leaven, Neither with the leaven of malice, because that's what we got in the religious yeah. system. People yeah, come yeah. together, even on the Shabbat, and want to come together and gossip and sit together and have <laughs> malice and jealousy because, you know, you lead the praise dances or you lead the <laughs> choir, and I don't like the way you sing and all that. He says, let's keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice of wickedness, because it's all wickedness, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So that's what the Most High is trying to get at. The heart issue is what he's trying to get at. Not at this religious aspect of, you know how to, Jake and Quake and the Spirit is on you, and you know how to tweak the tones and run around and jump up and down three times, tell somebody he's good and all that, and you go out and live like a hellion. My goodness. <laughs> but look, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 through 16 is another verse. You got to understand. He says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto Elohim continually. Well, that's the sacrifice of praise. <laughs> yeah, the praise Yahweh continually. Okay. He says that we might co communicate, forget not. Communicate to fellowship. Not in gossip and maliciousness, but to fellowship in truth and sincerity. Because yeah. he says, for with such sacrifices Elohim is well pleased. He's okay. pleased with those sacrifices, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, another question I have is, 
Well, since they talk about it was changed from uh, Saturday to Sunday, who is responsible for this? And why, I mean, what, what was the reason behind hiding this important mm -hmm. matter? Was it for self-interest, political reasons, what? Why, who changed the Sabbath? Well, the people of the prince, and that's basically it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to read a, a passage of scripture because I always like to use scripture, unlike what some people do. They want to get up in the pulpit and teach you and grab the ears, say yeah, but not give you no word. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that too. I get excited sometimes and, and <laughs> I might grab my ear. You know, people laugh at me when I do it, but nonetheless. <laughs> We want to give you some foundation, brothers and sisters. Yes. We need some word. We don't need no emotionalism because it is the yes. word that's going to give us life. Yes. Now, Daniel 9, verse 26, has a key verse here. He says, after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah, that's Yeshua, who you call Jesus, all right, the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, but and the people of the prince we're not talking about Prince 1999. We're okay. talking about the people of the Prince of the Power of the Air. Okay. The people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof and shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war, desolation is as determined. So the people of the Prince came to change, to think to change. There's another scripture in uh, Daniel chapter 7 where it says, He shall think to change times and laws. And that's what they did. So the people of the prince who had a hatred and a, 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 a envy towards the most high who hated him, and they were uh, strategically led by this one brother that most people don't deal with, Esau. Because mm. according to prophecy, brothers and sisters, Esau has mm. got to still be around during the time when the Messiah returns. Everybody's looking for Israel, but nobody's looking for Esau. And Esau mm -hmm. is in the world today. And the people that you think are the chosen people are actually Esau. And they are the ones that got together because if, if, if I had time, I don't have time to go to it. But <laughs> in Psalms, it says that the enemies of uh, the Most High, has, has, he, he have taken up crafty counsel against the hidden ones. Mm -hmm. Well, who are the hidden ones? The true Israelites. And so he got together to create a conspiracy because why? He hated the Most High. Okay. And so he was the one. Satan, Lucifer, Halel was the original one that started the plan. Yes, well, and he got a group of people together mm -hmm. who were called the people of the prince to come against the plan of the Most High. And he is the originator of that. And through the process of time, the beast, the fourth beast, the scripture talks about the beast system or the world government control system, the world power, they were the ones that grabbed the hold of that spirit of Esau, if mm. you will, and they took and twisted the scriptures and made things for their own gain. When I heard uh, Constantine <laughs> was another uh, player in this, that he changed, he put out an edict, and uh, he was trying to mix pagan and, I guess, quote, Christians together. Uh, I know the pagans did some worship, and he wanted both to have one designated day to worship, so I guess he figured, you know, to put them together, let them, you worship your way on Sunday, and the pagans would do the sun god worship on Sunday, because that's what Sunday arise, Sunday worship arise from, from sun worship. So yeah. a lot of people probably don't know that, but I'm just putting it out there. Uh, you have to read, you have to read, read about the history, you have to dig deeper, you have to take time to read about what's, what happened in the past to find out what's going on now. And I'm a true believer in the Sabbath now. I am convinced that it's true. And unless you go further, I mean, the Bible is what it is, but you still have to dig further for references and guides and dictionaries. I mean, most of the stuff I found out was out of the American Heritage Dictionary and an encyclopedia. <laughs> I mean, it ain't like I had to go to a special library, the Smithsonian, or n nothing like that. I just went to a plain dictionary and looked up what it was and who he was. And he, he was a, a, a true politician because he tread the fence. He had the pagans on his side, and he had so-called the Christians on his side. So everybody was worshiping on Sunday, and plus they didn't want to get killed because they were persecuting them too, so for observing Sabbath. So I understood that, uh, but a lot of people probably don't know. If they do know, then it's something to think about. You know, you, you're going along, 
with it, just like they did back in Constantine days. Uh, and it's not really that much different today. Right. We just dress different. <laughs> That's the only thing. Well, I want to read a quote since okay. you said that with uh, regards to Emperor, Emperor Constantine. And uh, this is a quote from History of the Christian Church, volume number three, the fifth edition from New York uh, Scribner, 1902, page 380. And he quotes, uh, on the venerable day of the sun, hmm, let the magistrates yeah. and the people reside in cities rest and let all worship uh, workshops be closed. Now, what uh, Sister Penny just said is key and on point. He says, on the venerable, or venerable, venerable, venerable day of the sun. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? He says, let all magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all wor workshops be closed. Now, this is not the most high speaking. This is the people of the prince. Okay. And he says, in the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits, because it, it often happens that another day is not so suitable. Mm for grain sowing, for vine planting, lest by neglecting the proper moment for such mm -hmm. operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. He says, given the seventh day of March, Crispus and Constantine being consuls, each of them for the second time. Now, so we, we, we talked about, but we have to understand that uh, even uh, uh, prior to that, the law was passed uh, during the time of the Maccabees. Okay. Antiochus Epiphanes, if you know anything about the book of Maccabees, it's a apocrypha book, so yes. uh, I would uh, recommend to get the apocrypha and read some of those books that were taken out because I don't know if you know it or not, but the King James 66 books that you got was not the 66 books in the 1611 King James. If King James was to come back today, he would ask them, where are the other books? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, and during the time of, of, of the Maccabees, Antiochus Epiphanes, this was approximately 175 to 164 uh, before the Common Era. And he's, a decree was made by Antiochus Epiphanes to declare law that the Israelites of old were not permitted to keep mm. the feast days and the Sabbath day as well as circumcision. So he decreed a law. But praise be to the Most High that there was a man, that he, had, he always had a man, he always had a remnant, he always has a remnant, brothers and sisters, okay. that during this time that Yahudas, who you call Judas Maccabees, led a revolt against the government mm. of the divided empire of Alexander the Greeks. Yes. And they reestablished the feast days, including the weekly Sabbath, which l later was ended after the time when the temple of Herod, during 70 AD, was sacked by Titus, epiphanies okay and the law became official under emperor constantine the emperor of rome in 321 a.d so that's when the sunday law was officially officially ordained not changed by yahshua or no, yahweh no. it was changed by man changed by man a so. man-made sabbath you keep sunday you keep a man-made sabbath you need to understand and i want to share something with you that the most High gave me to share with the, the viewing audience and this is something that he gave me to write to you. So listen to this now. Get this in your spirit. We, the Most High said this, we have adopted the worship of Satan. Hear it now. That is the son worship. Mm. We call the Savior by the son's name. We're going to deal with that in a minute. Yes. Instead of Yahshua, which is the name that the Father gave him. We have traditionally celebrated the son's birthday. That's December 25th, oh, Christmas. the oh. day of the venerable son. That's a whole nother lesson. Yeah. Then he says that we have celebrated uh, the son's new year, which is January 1st. Mm. We just celebrated. Well, we didn't celebrate, but the world has celebrated the new year based on the solar cycle and not the lunar cycle. Mm. All right. How can you have a new year in the middle of the winter when nothing is growing, when nothing is being planted? How is that a new year? <laughs> yeah. But, and he says that we celebrate the son's death, Easter and Passover this year. Look at your calendar. Easter and Passover, Pesach is not in the same month. Now, which mm -hmm. are you going to celebrate? Are you going to celebrate Easter, which is the son, S-U-N's death? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to celebrate Pesach, Passover, which is the S-U-N's? O-N of the Most High's death. 
Ooh, Think that, about it. Yeah, that's a topic all by itself. Passover versus Easter. <laughs> that's a whole program by itself. And last, he said that we celebrate the Son's Day of the Week. Mm -hmm. Think about this. We call our services Sunday worship. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Sunday worship. We are worshiping the sun in ignorance. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that clears it up about that day, uh, it's the Sabbath. I have another question, too. I, I know the audience has noticed we have not used Jesus, Lord, God, Adonai, or Jehovah. And the reason being, another reason why I have my guest on here is to talk about the Tetragamon and YHWH. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, if you can see this button here I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see that, but mm -hmm. that is the name of the Most High. The Most High doesn't have many names, as is commonly taught. Only one person has many names, and that's Satan. He has so many disguises. Why? Because he gets worship under the different disguises. Mm -hmm. But the Most High has one name. And when he spoke to the prophet Moshe, he said, what is your name? And he said, tell him, I am. Now, YHWH is what's called the Tetragrammaton, which means four letters, okay? In the ancient Hebrew, that's what the scriptures came from, Hebrew. In the mm -hmm. ancient Paleo-Hebrew script, those four letters, Y-H-W, yod Hey, y Hey, was in the ancient Paleo script. That is the name that the Most High told Moshe, this is my name. He didn't give him any other name. He said, this is my name forever. Y-H-W-H, and some pronounce it Yahweh, some pronounce it Yahweh, mm -hmm. some pronounce it Yahweh, -Wah -Hey, but nonetheless, Y-H-W-H, that was his name. He said, this is my name forever. Wow. Many believers feel that the Father and the Son should have many names, but Yahweh is the only name. It's not the titles. I guess I, I, I looked up the word Lord, God, Baal, and Jehovah, and I was really shocked to find out that Jehovah, the word Hova, mm -hmm. means ruin. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be on the title that means ruin. And then I looked up the word Lord, God, and Baal. Baal means Lord. Mm -hmm. First of all, I understood that Yahweh is not a God. Mm -hmm. uh, when he is addressed, we call him Father. We start our prayer off with our Father in heaven, not our God in heaven. Mm -hmm. He does specifically say Father. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say a title, you might as well say he's Father and Creator. And what convinced me is, was the, the prayer. Mm -hmm. Our Father who art in heaven. It ain't our Lord, our God, our Adonai, our mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, I stopped saying it. You know, I, he said he winks at us when we don't know any better. That's but right. now that I know, I will boldly pray in the name of Yahshua and Yahweh. Mm -hmm. I will pray to others in the name of Yahweh. And I won't use it because all of these are titles. When you look at it, please look it up in the dictionary. Look up the word Baal, mm -hmm. look up the word God, and look up the word Lord. Mm -hmm. Once you find out what those mean, and realize he is not a God. He is considered father and creator, and he has one name. So I do understand that, but people insist on using the God, Lord, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which is in, uh, in Spanish, what, Jesus, Jesus Christos? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how you say it in Spanish. Jesus Christos. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, I just want to kind of add just to kind of... Uh, <laughs> For those of you that have strong numbers, we always give you references and resources. We're not telling you, we're not making stuff up, just putting it in our own head, but we're telling right. you to research this stuff because you'll find out that it's true. If you find out it's not true, give us a call. Yes. And we'll change what we teach, but you'll find out if this is true. Get your strong numbers and look up the number 1943, and you will see the word hova, which means mischief or ruin, okay? Also, you will find the Hebrew word strong numbers 1942, which is hava. That's why we don't call the Most High Yahava, okay? Because Hava means coveting, rushing, falling, desire, and ruin. <laughs> the Most High 
didn't give him a name that means ruin. So therefore, Jehovah, let me just read something about Jehovah, mm -hmm. okay? Now, um, since we, we, we kind of mentioned about Jehovah, this is from uh, Holman's Dictionary. Plain dictionary. <laughs> find it in the dictionary. That's all you got to do is look in the dictionary. <laughs> and whatever you, whatever you want to find the truth. If you're looking for truth, don't listen to the preacher in the pulpit. Research. Because nine chances out of ten, the preacher in the pulpit ain't going to tell you this because he want to keep the money coming in his pocket. <laughs> but Jehovah, it says here, the special and signific significant name, not merely an appellation title such as Lord, by which Elohim revealed himself to the ancient Hebrews, this name, the Tetragrammaton of the Greeks, was held by, by the later Jews to be so sacred mm. that it was never pronounced except by the high priest on the great day of atonement. Now, we do a teaching to show you that the Most High let all of creation know his name. Yes. Everybody knew his name. So it wasn't a secret, brothers and sisters. He wanted to call that name. That's why you say hallelujah, because hallelujah means celebrate you, yah. Hallel, celebrate, lu, you, and yah. That's why when you get happy in church and the spirit come on, you say, hallelujah. <laughs> you call on the name of the yeah. most high and don't know it. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Why is it highest praise? Because hallelujah. Yeah. You were saying celebrate you, yah. Yeah. You don't think the most high's name is yah? So just stop saying hallelujah because that's his name and that's why you say it. Well, now, hallelujah. But they said that his name was too sacred mm -hmm. to be uttered. Who said that? They said it. What did the words say? Let's look at what the words say, right? The Most High said, told, told Moshe that I raised you up to declare my name. He wants us to know his name, not to hide his name, but to wear his name, but to proclaim his name throughout the world. That's why you can't stop saying hallelujah, because every time you say hallelujah, you are declaring the name of the Most High. Hallelujah. Yeah, because they, I mean, a lot of people don't even know that Jesus Christ uh, derives from the word Zeus, and I, ignorantly, I didn't know uh, when I would pray to Jesus Christ that I was really praying to Zeus. Uh, we say it in English, Jesus, but in Latin, is Jesus, and when you look up the name Zeus, that's a Greek god, mm -hmm. but like I said again, uh, thank, I thank Yahweh for his mercy because we didn't know any better, uh, but now that I do know I would not use that name because he only has one name. If you say, oh, he has many names, that's just one of them. Or they say, you shouldn't say that. That is his Hebrew name. That's mm -hmm. the argument I usually get. That is his Hebrew mm -hmm. name. We should not use the name of Yahweh because it's Hebrew. But the names that they name their children these days is much longer than the name of Yahweh. You can't even <laughs> pronounce them. So I figure if you could say that long name, but some people name their children, it's hard to, to pronounce. Yahweh, Yah, is not hard to pronounce. No, not at all. It's, not, and it's, it's really not hard, but they insist on these titles. I just ask you again, just look up the word Baal, B-A-A-L, mm -hmm. Lord and God, mm -hmm. or Gad, mm -hmm. because it comes two mm -hmm. different ways, God or Gad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and find out for yourself, he is not a God. He doesn't even want to be presented as a God. It's almost like an insult uh, to do that. So... I just tell people to just look it up. You will find out for yourself. Then you can make a, a, a conscious decision instead of doing it by traditions. And I know traditions that hard. So a lot of this was tradition-based, and people have to be reprogrammed. They got to purge all this, those beliefs out and get the new beliefs in. So I guess that's going to take some time, and he will, he, we are a work in progress. So. Well, something that you said, which is key, the prophet spoke on that because he knew that in this hour that people would change the Most High's name and call him Baal. Mm. Just like you said, Lord is Baal, and, and, and we're going to deal with the Jesus thing in a minute, mm -hmm. but I, I want to kind of deal with this right quick. Yeremiah or Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 27, and it reads as thus, which thing to, which think to cause my people to forget my mm -hmm. name by their dreams? Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a prophecy, mm -hmm. which they tell every man his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Mm, for Lord. Baal and Lord. Baal means Lord. Okay, now, mm. but here's the assuring thing. The Most High in this hour, that's the reason why you're saying, well, I have not heard about this. 
because we're in the last hour. And the Most High said he's going to raise that up. Now, he says in the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verse 16, that it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, or Yah, or Yahweh, mm -hmm. that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Belli. Mm. See that? For he says, I will take away the names of Balaam mm -hmm. out of their mouth. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. Now, we was talking about uh, a, a, a Jesus. Yes. Now, brothers and sisters, the Messiah's name was not Jesus. 2,000 years ago, English wasn't even spoken in the city of Jerusalem. So, and there was no J. If you do a search on the Internet yep. and do a, go to the library, get your head out of watching reruns of Gunsmoke and all of that, <laughs> and, and, and go to the library and research and find out that the letter J didn't exist in the King James 1611, there was no letter J. Not only that, but the Messiah's name couldn't have been Jesus because there was nobody in Jerusalem named Jesus. Now, check this out. Mm. Jesus, and you can look it up in your Strong's Numbers, find out that Jesus is translation from the Greek mm. Jesus, or Latin Jesus, I should say. Let me back it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the Greek Isus, oh. and it goes all the way back to ancient Babylon Isis, or Ias, oh. which is the masculine f uh, variation of Isis, the feminine deity or the deity or the quote-unquote goddess of fertility. So that goes all the way back. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to go to your church when you go on Sunday morning. People say, brother, you're beating the church up. I'm, not be I'm just no. telling the truth. So if the church is mad, then so be it. <laughs> look at your communion table. And when you look at your communion table, look for this uh, inscription, I-H-S. I-H on the communion table. Mm. It's there. I guarantee you it's there. Look on your communion cup set. <laughs> and the I-H-S represents Isis, Horus, and Seth, which mm -hmm. are the ancient trinity deity way back in ancient Babylon. Uh, and that name, wow. Jesus, was transferred over from that. And that is the order of the Jesuits. Do a study on the Jesuits. Go and type in on your computer, Jesuit, Jesuit. and you'll find that that is the signet and the seal of the Jesuits. And a lot of people aren't even aware of that. I, I used to do communion. I don't do it anymore because I only observe Passover. That takes care of everything. <laughs> um, I stopped doing communion. I stopped that one. Again, please study. Get involved in studying about this word. Just don't listen to me or Brother Kazakia. I mean, the Internet is full of truth. They have full lies, but they have a lot of truth. You pray before you do your study and ask the Most High to help you um, receive the truth. Because we are living in the last days. And I would, I would love to worship him in the correct day. Our ancestors made a big mistake by turning their backs on the Most High. So it doesn't mean that all of us have to keep doing that. Uh, we have resources now. We got the Internet. We got real truthful teachers like Kazakia here who will help us understand. He can use different mouthpieces to explain the truth. So it's not hard to find out. It's, it's a, a willingness. Are you willing to find out? My life has changed since I observed Sabbath, since I did more research. It's like a feeding to me, and my soul is getting filled every day with new truth about him. And when it's all said and done, all the stuff that we used to do, you're going to find out it ain't even about that. It's not even all, the, all, these, all this work and all this stuff we was doing in the church. It's going to be more than that. It's about worshiping him. It's about understanding who he is, uh, respecting him, and the main word is obeying him. Because he wants to bless us. He wants to bless us. But we have to learn about him. He said, learn of me. So we have to learn of him. We just can't do it, you know, every week. We have to do it a little bit here. You know, we have to learn here a little, there a little. So yeah. that's how we have to do it. So we have to continue to do that. This is an ongoing process. Uh, I have one other question for okay. you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just glad that I, I've had a chance to study because it's been a big help in my life. Um, now, when people continue, like if I want to have a prayer partner, and they pray to me in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. and I pray to them in the name of Yahweh, mm -hmm. is that, is there something wrong with that? Is it conflicting, or is it wrong to do? I, I, 
even though I tell them I'm not praying and I'm not praying to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying to you in the name of Yahweh, Yahshua, Messiah. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Well, you said something that was that was key, and, uh, and earlier, and this kind of ties into this. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned about my people, who have been taught how to just walk in total disobedience. Now. Look in your scriptures in 2 Kings chapter 17, and you will see that the Most High is not pleased with mixed worship. Mm -hmm. And that's what's called mixed worship, okay? When you know to do better, you can't do the same thing because, see, what you got to understand, what most people don't understand is that in the nation of Israel was divided into northern and southern kingdom. And those were Israelites, people that looked like me and, and my sister over here were the true ancient biblical Israelites. We are descendants of the bloodline Israelite. I know you've probably never been told it before, mm -hmm. but that's who you are. You're not an African-American or Negro. You are an Israelite in captivity. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and yes. uh, Leviticus chapter 26 and tons and tons of other scriptures. Yes. But so the Most High uh, rejected that because if you read the second, uh, second Kings chapter 17, you'll find that the, after the northern tribes of Israel has started mixing the worship mm. with the nations around them, oh, they were taken out of the land. Mm -hmm. and removed out of the land. And the king of Assyria brought imposters in from Hamath, from Babylon, from Kuthath, from Ava, from Sepharim, the Sepharim people. And mm -hmm. they dwelt in the land of Samaria in the place of the natural bloodline Israelites. So now you ask me a question, okay? Is it permissible to pray and you know the right, correct name and to agree in prayer with somebody who's praying to Zeus? That's what it boils down to. No. The Most High has come to your living room, to your home today, to tell you that his name is not Jesus Jesus. His name is Yahshua, which means Yah, the self-existing one, is salvation. Yah means to self-exist. Shua in the Hebrew means salvation, okay, or deliverance, or protection. Shua, okay. Wa means to give life. Yah means to be life, okay? So when you be life, that's the creator, Yah, and Wah means to give life through his son, Yahshua, who came to give us life. Mm -hmm. He said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So when you get this understanding, you understand why the, the, the enemy hates you to use that mm -hmm. name or prevent you from using that name because he understands the power and the authority in that name of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He understands the power and authority in the name of Yahshua because why he has the Father's name in his name. Oh, and yeah. Yah is salvation, brothers and sisters. There is no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved but the name of Yahshua. That's his name, and you better check it out. Yeah. And another <laughs> thing, too, we have a few minutes to go. Hallelujah. Um, well, we look at our King James Version, NLV, and International Version. The name Jesus is in all the Bibles, but what you have to do is research, and why is Jesus in there as big G God and little G God mm -hmm. and Lord? You have to find out why is all those names in the Bible. You have to do your research. It was take the name Yahweh and Yahshua was taken out deliberately because they, they thought the name was too sacred to say in public when he clearly said to speak his name. Because there's power in the name of Yahshua. There's power in the name of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you look at your, in your Bibles, that's true. You have Lord, God, and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But you have to do research. Who took the name Yahweh and Yahshua out of the Bibles? That's mm -hmm. what you need to research. Because all the Bibles today have the same name, Jesus Christ. And we're not bashing any church or anything, but Yahshua is the Messiah. He's not Christ. He's a, the Messiah, the Savior of the mm -hmm. world. And um, Kazakia, mm -hmm. I would like to know if people want to get in touch with you about this, this information, because it's so important, uh, how can they reach you? Do you have a website address? Or, you know, how may they contact you if they want the information? Hallelujah. Well, there's several ways you can, you can reach me. You can visit our website at www.malakia, that's M A L. A K I Y A H dot org, www.malachiah dot org. And also, uh, we hold services in the Roseland area 
under the banner of the Community of Israel, the Righteous Remnant, at 10807 uh, uh, South Wentworth. And you can visit their website at Community of Israel, Israel with a Y, Y I S, Community of Y I S R A E L dot com. Okay. And uh, you can see us there. And send us an email, call us if you have any questions. If you think something that we've taught is incorrect, call us. We're open to dialogue. We will come to your church. We'll come to your Bible study. Mm -hmm. We'll come to your home, and we'll discuss this. If we're wrong, we'll change, and we'll teach what you teach. But okay. if we are right and you're wrong, then you're obligated to change and to teach what the Most High has instructed by line upon line and precept, precept upon precept. precept. Here a little, there a little. Hallelujah. Um, last thing, we have about two minutes to go. Uh, you can also see Kazakia on YouTube. That's how I came across him, because I was looking up the word Yahshua. And when I typed in the word Yahshua, the name came up. And I looked up several wow. um, <laughs> scriptures. of He talked about Easter. He talked about Christmas. He talked about the name of Yahshua. Uh, how, hallelujah is the highest praise. What is the Hebrew Israelite? You need to go on YouTube as well. YouTube is not all bad. You know, you just have to type in the word Yahshua, look up the word Kazakia in YouTube is with a C. It's not with the K. And click on his uh, his his you know his website and see where all he has because he has a wealth of information. Plus he gives you scripture and that's what it's all about scripture. And get familiar with your dictionaries and things like that. But I, that's how I came across Brother Kazakia on the YouTube. And I've been listening to him ever since. It got me studying more because he always stressed, look it up for yourself. Please look it up for yourself so you won't have to, you know, say it's, it's wrong or right. Um, my life is better. It's getting much better as time goes on. And I, I'm glad that Yash, uh, Yahshua used me. He used my mother to plant the seed. But who would know today that out of that seed, I'm stressing about the name of Yahweh and Yahshua because he used broadcast and he will use whatever it takes to get his word out. So, you know, just take heed to the website, check out YouTube, bust out your dictionary and, mm -hmm. and encyclopedias, get familiar with it, and just study. He will, he will tell you the truth. If you want to find out, I just ask him, what is your name, Yahshua or Jesus? <laughs> and I just came to him just like that, and he told me. Yasha. There it is. And that was it. So I want to thank you, Kazakia, for being on the oh, show. Thank you for having me. And, uh, I learned a wealth of information. To do this again. <laughs> yes, no problem. I really enjoyed it. And thank you, uh, Raymond Martez, for letting me speak on this uh, important subject. You're watching CAN-TV 19.